Hello Aquarius, how's everybody doing today? I hope that you're doing well and I can't wait to get into the forecast today. We're going to be looking at November and as always you can use this for your sun, your rising and your moon. You can also cross watch or look at uh, this on behalf of someone in your life if you'd like as well. Um, lots of messages that came through this morning and we'll be getting into all of those in just a second. Um, first things first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. This little furry creature is my dog Apollo. And um, today I'm going to be looking at, as I said, November. And I like to separate the reading into a few parts to kind of help us navigate all of the energies. I start with the channeled messages, which were right in front of me. Um, today, a large portion of these came through um, dream interpretation. One thing that I do that's kind of unique is the night before uh, I read for any particular sign, I'll set the intention to receive information for that sign. And I get a lot of messages in dream and also uh, through automatic writing and meditation before I begin. So the first portion is just a big psychic download and we'll be talking about that. Then I'll take a look at the deck of cards that I've selected and help us um, see high points or challenges looking at that Celtic cross. And after that, all right, buddy, I'll let you get done. Um, after that, we'll take a look at the expanded forecast where we'll go through health, wealth, love, and destiny. Um, and that also just gives you a chance to really see your life from all angles and all of the opportunities in front of you. Um, at the very end, I like to also go a little bit deeper into something that I call the soul path. And this is a chance for us to look at some of the things that we talk about today, maybe one or two of the areas that um, offer the most growth or maybe some of the most challenging areas and um, hopefully resolve them or give you the keys that you need to maximize the month ahead. And then we'll meditate and have a sound bath and that's it. So um, I can't wait to share all the stuff that I was picking up on. It was very vivid last night and, um, and a lot of uh, clear, <laughs> clear messages came through. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, first of all, Ryan and Maria, because they always help keep a nice organized space here. Those are my moderators, by the way. So if you have high level questions about what we're going, um, what we're going to do next or where to find something, they're great at doing that. Um, and they're also really um, helpful because they let me just do my thing. I can sit here and channel without having to kind of answer all the questions there. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, uh, you can do so through a couple of different ways, actually. If you're watching this live, there's something called Super Chat. And um, Super Chat is this little emoji here, like the dollar sign. And you can send um, some sort of a sticker or a message, rainbow or something like that, and just say thank you. I do appreciate that. It helps me to continue to buy new cards. I'm using actually one of my newer decks today, um, Spirit Within. And um, that's because of you guys, so thank you. And if you're watching this on replay, then there's an applaud button here that you can use as well. Plus, of course, the channel membership and uh, and Patreon for those of you that support me there. So thank you so much. Without any additional delay, oh yeah, one last thing. I don't do Q&A just because it takes me out of it. I actually try not to look at comments too much because sometimes that distracts me. So um, I appreciate that. I will be doing something next month, more to come on that, but. Uh, for all of my monthly readings, I like to just kind of stay in the channel so I can be coherent and that everybody can enjoy this, whether you're watching it live or on replay. So thanks for understanding. Let's get into your channeled messages, beginning with a particular totem spirit that came through many, many times in the dreams last night. Um, I saw more than once an alligator, and I think this is probably the first time I've ever seen that particular spirit animal come through. And I had to kind of like meditate on what an alligator meant to me. And then also there were some things that were going on in the dream with that. I wanted to go to, to kind of like the beneficial pieces of what an alligator symbolizes. I see it as a very uh, resilient, very strong creature. Uh, and I, you can't think of an alligator and not think of its mouth and its teeth. And that was a big part of what I think its power is, that jaw, right? And so... First of all, these strength. There's a one of my newer decks that I use actually has. Uh, I think it's the fairy tale deck that I use. Um, it has a strength card where the woman, instead of having like a tiger or a lion or something like that, she's actually kind of wrangling an alligator. What I was focusing on for you is that your words um, really have a chance to make an impact, carry a punch or carry a bite, if you will. Um, and this can be an advantage if you're a lawyer. If you are trying to negotiate something, if you're normally the quiet person in the room and you have something to say and you surprise people, I think that 
you, you don't want to underestimate your capacity to really make a change happen with your words this month. And that's a powerful thing. And for that, I was grateful to see the alligator. And I think that it reminds all of us that we have maybe a bigger voice than we give ourselves credit for, or we have a little bit more to say, or we have the ability to kind of be stronger or stand up for ourselves because um, yeah, an alligator represents all those things to me. Now, you wanna use this wisely because it can backfire on you. And the other part of the, the persistent piece that I saw in the dreams was um, that the alligator kept popping up in places that I didn't wanna see it. At one point, it was right beneath my feet. Somehow I was kind of like levitating or rising above the alligator. And there was a message there to kind of like stay above. To me, it can represent like gossip or lower levels of speech, things where you're kind of saying things that you don't wanna say and they can come somehow kind of come back and bite you. So this is really staying above that kind of energy. Uh, the other thing was, I felt like some of us know someone in our life right now that has that capacity to wanna sort of like get under our skin, push our buttons or do something like this. And this is basically saying, don't mess with that because that's a formidable and challenging sort of <laughs> adversary that may not be worth your time and energy. Um, another piece when we're talking about the words again is that once they're said, they can't be unsaid. So because there's such a powerful kind of punch or bite with the words this month, you want to be really cognizant of when, if, and should you kind of like talk about something or, or say something. So choose those words wisely and realize that they're going to stick around a little bit, especially uh, in the days here now of the internet where nothing's really deleted ever. There's always like a mirrored copy or backup copy somewhere. So if you've said it, if you've tweeted it, if you've typed it, it's probably out there and it's out there for a while. So just use your words to kind of bring about blessings or benedictions or um, hope and encouragement rather than cutting things down. Um, also, don't try to corner someone and don't let them corner you. So this can be sort of more figurative than the literal image that I was seeing in my dream. Uh, but sometimes we have, like, it could be a, a boss, a coworker, a roommate, a friend, whatever, people that know how to, know how we work and, and can kind of like get us pushed into something like, oh, you said you were going to do that. Blah, blah. Like, don't let yourself kind of get talked into something that you don't feel comfortable doing. You can always ask for more time. You can always change your mind. You can always ask questions. And remember, you're the alligator too, so you can be strong. You don't want someone else to kind of push you around on this. Um, if you feel like you need an advocate or if you have a difficult conversation or a thing that you need to cover, um, do it in a team because that was the way we were able to get rid of the alligator in my dream. It was two or three of us and we shut the door and that was it. So um, teamwork is super important, especially if there's a challenging person or thing that you need to work with. It's kind of like slaying a dragon. Don't, don't necessarily do it yourself. Work with a group, get um, on the same page at the same time. And most importantly, as I was saying, keep your head clear and rise above any sort of drama or lower frequency communication. By and large, the alligators are friend here. It's showing us our strength and our ability to really use speech to our benefit. But uh, especially for your sign, it's also reminding you that words cut both ways. I didn't write it down, but it's kind of like the king or the queen of swords in reverse where it's direct, but sometimes too direct, or it's saying things in a way that can be misconstrued, even if it makes sense to you. So just vet out what you're trying to say and make sure that other people are um, understanding it in the same way, okay? The next thing that I saw was breadcrumbs, like the Hansel and Gretel um, Grimm's fairy tale. And the first thing that I thought about, I had to kind of remember the fairy tale where, um, I think it was, Hansel that was putting out the breadcrumbs, but the idea was good, but the birds ate it. If I, if I remember correctly, they all came and then they got, the kids got lost in the woods. So they had a backup plan. They were like, we're going to do this. We're going to see where it takes us. And we we can all, always follow our, our breadcrumbs out there, but the backup plan wasn't very well vetted. So have a couple, like have a plan B, have a plan C and make sure that you've done a little bit of research to uh, see if that feels good, if it's going to be okay. Um, yeah, basically just kind of test out some of your backup plans and you should be okay. It's just making sure that you've thought it through completely. Now in modern day, like that kind of inspired the whole idea of breadcrumb navigation and following breadcrumbs. So it's it's almost become its own meme or its own thing outside of the Grimm fairy tale, um, Grimm's fairy tale rather. And so 
now what I'm kind of interpreting it as as well is that some people want to follow you. So get ready to step into that role because a lot of what you're doing could be sort of like a template or an inspiration for other people. Because if you think of breadcrumb navigation, you kind of look to see where you're at and it can be a wayfinding sort of thing. So you may be a beacon of hope or someone that's inspirational. Like so many of your messages today, Aquarius, a lot of these have um, a flip side, which is lead, you need to lead by example and make sure you're covering your tracks, covering your bases. Better yet that you don't have anything to cover. Just assume everything's going to find the light of day. Because to me, the, the breadcrumb is a traceable uh, sort of path back to you. And even if you're trying to cover everything, one or two of those crumbs may still be there. So um, a few important messages with this, which is if you're having a, a plan, make sure that it's tested out, make sure the backup plan is also good. Redundancy is important. And whenever you like backup files, you should have at least three different uh, mechanisms that are backing it up in three different locations in case of failure. So that was something I learned back when I was in grad school and it's a good thing and I try to do that even now. Um, people wanna follow you, so lead by example and expect that things are going to be found. Therefore, just like the bread crumbs were uh, found, so uh, I forgot to mention this, if there's any issues that you need to fix, if you have to pay some taxes, if you have some debts that you have to um, figure out, if there's someone in your, your past that you wish you said you were sorry to, do all that now so that in the future when you run into them or when these things get audited or picked up, no problem, I solved it. Um, and that's the important thing. Take care of this time right now to clean up all the pieces of your life, all those little breadcrumbs, okay? The next thing that I saw was a door being locked. And in one of the scenarios, it was the alligator that was locked in the door. But in another one, it was just sort of like, I felt that the door was leading to a path that didn't, didn't really hold any benefit. So realize that the divine has a way of shutting doors symbolically in our life that we don't need to revisit. Sometimes these doors could be like an ex lover where you're just like, why well, can't? I'll have people reach out to me and say like, how can I get this person back? And sometimes I pull some cards and I think, do you really want this person back? Because the energy doesn't seem like it's beneficial. It seems like it might be pulling you in a different place. It might be anchoring you down instead of allowing you to, to move forward. So trust that some doors shut should remain shut. Instead, you could shift your focus to the ones that are open and welcoming. Um, so doors and windows shut and close um, for a reason and new ones will open up for the same reason. If you're trying too hard for something, there's probably a reason that it's not working out. There may be a better time, there may be a better place, there may be a better connection. And once you allow for all of those things to come into play, then it will work. Um, but forcing it could be creating more problems for you. So if a door is shut, try to find one that's open. This is another way that I could restate that for you. And the next thing that I saw literally was writing on the wall, not like the writings on the wall, but I saw something like a sentence or like words that you were reading on the wall. And part of that told me that um, I feel like it's almost like the judgment card. Um, you already know what to do. There's a clear indication of it, but you just have to like read and digest what that message is. Um, fear or uh, sometimes uncertainty can stop you from taking that leap of faith but it's just holding you back in that case. So this is something that you don't necessarily need or want to kind of allow for kind of that, that anchoring to happen again. I feel like both the door and, and this writing on the wall was literally saying, not this, this. Um, and so it's kind of like there's a fork in the road, but for some reason, some of you are hesitating. And I think if you can go into the root of the fear or the uncertainty, you'll be able to get past that hesitation and focus on something that's worth your time and energy. This comes through again here uh, with the next thread, but it seems like for many of you, a move or moving on is inevitable. So this is a time to really prepare for that change that's coming forth. The final thing that I saw was an analog clock, um, like not the digital ones, but one with the, you know, the hands and the, the second hand and all of that. But you were turning that upside down, which would make no sense. Um, I kind of inferred that it could be kind of like an hourglass where you're trying to do a reset. But there were a few other things that came through because I, I really thought, no, it's like you're trying to manipulate time, but you can't. So what I see with this upside down clock is that 
for some of you, it's time to move on. It's time to reset expectations. Um, you might be kind of on borrowed time or there might be a gift of extra time, but there's only so much you can have before it's time to do the next thing. And I think, again, a big theme this month could be like nostalgia, fear or uncertainty that kind of makes you want to get into the four of pentacles thing, which was almost like holding on to time sometimes too. Let me just hold on to this to make sure this moment never goes away. Um, I, I think it's important to be present, but we can't kind of like freeze time altogether. Instead, look at managing your time better and embrace the possibilities. Get into the daydreaming sort of mode, like two of wands, seven of cups, high priestess energy, where you're thinking of possibilities, believing in it, and starting to set some plans in action. Uh, but that clock also reminds me a lot of the Wheel of Fortune. That's what I kind of was trying to, I, was, I thought, what would this be like if I was looking at a tarot card? And because of the four seasons and the passage of time and the new reset, my guides were kind of showing me the Wheel of Fortune. So that's a good thing because it shows me prosperity is around the corner, but it requires a release, a release of an old cycle and an embracing of a new cycle. So you got something really powerful messages here from the alligator to the breadcrumbs to the writing on the wall to the clock that was being reversed. I was shown some very, very clear images. I don't always get those kind of clear images, but nonstop <laughs> last night, I was waking up, tapping stuff into my phone and going back to sleep, which is what I do before these readings sometimes. So um, a lot of powerful messages and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they kind of um, play out here in the cards here in just a moment. While I'm stacking up all of my note cards here, um, just a reminder in the next portion, uh, I'm just gonna focus on the cards in front of me. Uh, I'm trying not to read chat because sometimes that distracts me. So uh, if, if there's any high level questions, my moderators can help. Otherwise, I'm gonna focus on getting the cards arranged, receiving additional messages as I do that. And if you missed anything that I just went through, I'm actually gonna hold up and read each card at the midpoint, so don't worry about it. Um, plus, I post pictures on my social media, so just a quick plug there. If you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, or if you're not subscribed to this channel, it's a good reason to do that because I'll make sure that you get a chance to see all of that. All right. Let's uh, see the cards in a good shuffle and see what's coming through, okay? If you just joined, welcome. You, you joined at a perfect time. Another interesting thing with the clock thing is that you can't always, you can't turn back time. Share is in my head now, um, and my guides are reminding me of that. So uh, it's not always wise to do that because it it kind of brought us where we were, where we are right here and right now. So that was one final message that I had to kind of share is that we can't and maybe don't want to change what has been. All right, now let's take a look at other messages for the month of November. Again, you can use this for sun rising and moon.
All right, everybody, thank you so much for giving me a moment to get everything set up here. I'm going to start with our, it was actually interesting here, the final card was the Wheel of Fortune, so that um, that goes in nicely with what, what, what we were talking about there just a moment ago. Okay, so you got two cards here for the catalyst. When that happens, I let it happen. So um, the first one is a spirit fox, and it says, trust your talents in changing times. So it's interesting because you have death at the center, which is transformation. And um, this is basically saying you've got the wisdom and the capacity to travel through this period of change. Um, it's a little scary sometimes to go through change, but you've totally got this. Um, and that's what this is showing you here. Um, the card is reverse, which sometimes can be second guessing your intuition or your instincts. Because when I see something like a fox, it's more about instinct than maybe um, intuition. But um, I love this as a symbol. It's a really intelligent animal. Um, it can think its way through a lot of things. So be as sly as a fox. You can, you can get this taken care of this month. Be aware of people in your life that are trying to put one over on you. Um, this is basically showing me that you're nobody's fool and you'll be able to see through that. And it's really a matter of how you're going to deal with it because you might have another sly fox in your midst and you're, you're just going to try to figure out um, what am I going to do about that person? Okay. But overall, I love the fox. I love where it's at and, um, and it's here to help you out. Okay. And in an upright position, we have the medicine guardian uh, and it says be open to healing information. I think it's really just an important time to focus on personal health. We also see this is a very um, heart chakra colored card. It's all green. So this is a, a chance for you to focus on growth, health, abundance, um, really improving your heart center as well, making sure that you're feeling happy that emotionally you're in a, in a good space. So I like what I see with this. And if there's anyone in your life that's kind of coming through and testing that or bringing you into a place where you're not sure about how you feel, um, that's, that's coming through for a reason. So trust your instincts. Um, and if you don't feel good about it, or if they're somehow getting you upset or getting into your heart space, it's something that you want to uh, pay attention to and think, why is this person in my life? Why is this going on? Do I want to continue with this, et cetera? All right. Your center card is death reversed. Whenever I see like death gets a bad rap in tarot, um, I wish in more decks it was simply shown as a transformation or like a gateway card because that's really what it is. It does involve shutting a door and opening another door. And, um, and that's part of it. We're also, this is like the perfect card for November because we have Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead. Like literally there's a lot of ancestral energy at the beginning of the month. Some of you may be connecting quite heavily with that ancestral energy. Death is reversed, which could mean that some of you are at a place where you're trying to make peace with a change that's happened or someone that you've lost or something that's kind of moving through your life. And it's, it's even just your own mortality. And you're trying to think like, am I ready for whatever's next? either the next journey, or am I worried about how much time I have on the planet? Remember the time management message I was talking about. None of us are guaranteed anything. So just take every day as a blessing and do what you can to try to um, reap possibilities instead of like worrying about this kind of reaping, right? Um, because we don't, we can't control all of that to some degree. I do believe that the angels, there's more than one, but I believe that the angels of death come through when our soul is ready. So if you're not ready, keep pushing, keep moving, keep doing things. But this angel is here also to help us through life changes. So we shouldn't freak out when we see the death card. It's saying, oh, this is going to be an interesting period. Some new things are coming through. Have I wrapped up all of my old business, which is exactly what we're talking about. Because when this angel card is reversed uh, or the, the death card is reversed, it's saying, am I stagnating? Am I holding myself back? Am I just dragging my feet? Um, if the answer is yes to any of those, then let go and move on. That's all this card can mean for some of you is time to release, time to move forward. But if you are dealing with um, deceased or ancestral or spirit energy, what a beautiful time it is, the beginning of the month particularly. But for those of you watching live, like the next week or so, the veil is thin, and the week after that, the veil is thin. I would say from the 22nd to the third, fourth, fifth, whatever. It's going to be pretty, pretty open during this period. So, you know, connect with those who have lost, talk to them, uh, meditate on releasing any sort of anger, fear, frustration that you have between you and, and those people that have passed 
and you can clear the way for the, the holiday season, for the next year ahead. And you're also going to lift energy. When we kind of send that blessing to the ancestral side and kind of let go of it, it's almost like you're blessing yourself and everyone that follows as well, especially if it's a bigger family. So focus on ancestral healing. I think it'll be a good thing. What this is going to do is clear your head. We've got the Queen of Wands, and she's the she's a magical card. I, I like to kind of remind people of that. Not maybe as illustrated here, but in the traditional Rider Waite Smith, she's able to like make things grow in a desert, um, which you can infer means that she has some magical qualities. And because I see her as like the, the one of the best management cards or thinking cards, you can think your way out of any corner. Even if there's an alligator snapping at you, you can probably come up with something that is appealing that will, you know, redirect that energy and you can focus on something else. We do see the cat, which is almost always with her. Um, so that's just telling me that you have good reflexes, you have good instincts, you have um, nine lives. This is not the end. Isn't it interesting that we have like the cat right on top of death? So what seems like an end probably isn't. And um, just go into your instincts to figure out what that means. Okay. As we look into the deep past, we have a card that typically has to do with control. Um, I really like that this particular illustrator took a different approach here. We see like a skateboarder, right? Um, and one of the things that's important here is that you don't necessarily need other people to pull you along. A traditional chariot has those two horses. You're always trying to wrangle you know, um, those animals to kind of go in the same direction. Here we have more of like an entrepreneurial independent spirit with the skateboarder. And they're more capable of kind of like moving um, and, and dodging and kind of swerving in and out of things. Your flexibility for sure is being tested. Um, it has been tested in 2020. There's still going to be tests throughout 2021. And you're maybe realizing now that I'm, I'm the one that should be controlling things. So you're flipping the switch and saying, yeah, it's always been about me. So I like what I see in this card. Okay. We have an upright fool here, um, a leap of faith. And notice how this one is not afraid there. This is more of like a yoga stretch than anything. So don't be afraid to kind of look into the unknown or dip your feet in the water or kind of take a chance, okay? Um, the death card, the fool card, the wheel of fortune, that's a pretty nice uh, trifecta. So that's the center. This is the recent past. And then we have this in the future. Um, it's reversed just like the clock was, but it's telling me that a new cycle is ready if you're ready. You can't fight it though. Um, so this is what you need to lean into quite literally is the fool energy, which is I'm going to take this, this chance. There's always a calculated risk. If we go back to my channeled messages though, if you have a plan B and a plan C, you're going to be able to kind of feel more confident and comfortable. So figure out what those um, backup plans are, what that safety net is going to be. And once you have that, the death reverse card is saying, what are you waiting for? You don't have any more excuses. It's time to move on. We have the page of swords also reverse, but that goes to what I was talking about earlier with king or queen of swords reverse, which is this sort of uh, straightforward communication. When it's upright, it just means you have really great capacity to use your words, but, but reversed it's direct. And there's a reason that I read reversals because it's like doubling your language when you have the ability to look at things. So this definitely has a different connotation. I like that it's a page. Pages reverse don't scare me. Um, no, really no cards scare me. But like sometimes when I see the king or the queen of swords reverse, I think be careful. With the page, not so much. It's really about finding the right way to say just enough. The only thing that a page of swords can do that can be kind of like getting in the way here is because it's about listening to like receiving and listening because a page delivers messages. Um, make sure that you're not missing out on something or that you're not talking over or that the words weren't maybe on the other side also misunderstood. Something in the, in the communication could break down and that's something that you wanna be aware of this month. So pause, check in, then also validate what you assume you heard. Those little um, half, half checks, so stops in between, they're going to be really effective and they're going to be helpful in uh, making sure that you don't do something that uh, gets you into trouble. This is kind of like the alligator here, the moon card. Um, so the moon card often comes through when we, when we feel territorial, when we feel triggered, when someone invades our space, when we're shown a side of ourselves that we're maybe not ready to see, it could be very valid, but it's sort of like, I didn't, I didn't, 
I wasn't ready to deal with that just yet. Well, it's going to come up this month. That's why I was kind of encouraging all of you to sort of look back and think, what is it that I don't want people to find out and just work on that. Uh, and that's going to help you because that helps you go through the shadow energy and bring in light, bring in illumination. And that's really all the moon is. It's a gentler, um, reflective energy. There's a little bit that's scary because the edges are fuzzy when you're looking through the lens of the moon, but it is really great for instinct. And I get a lot of my dreams, um, a lot of my messages through dreams. So there's a lot of nocturnal energy there and it's very powerful. So I love the moon and I think it's a great card. Uh, when I see something that's scary in a dream, I just try to break down the symbology. Or if I see something in my life and it makes me um, uneasy, I try to figure out why am I uneasy? Not like, I don't try to put the power in the person, place, or thing. I put it back into myself and I'm like, why are you triggered? Why did that make you feel? And what can you do now to not feel triggered? Then you have the power and that was just the catalyst, like these cards. They're just, they're just cards. They're just catalysts. It's just showing you information. It's just a totem. And if you realize everything in your life is just kind of like that, it's a lesson, it's a totem, it's a signal, then suddenly you have the power, not it. And that's going to be really important as you wake up psychically and you start to see things or connect with spirits or energies. If you don't want to talk to it, just say goodbye <laughs> and disconnect. Or if there's something else that comes through, ask it, be more inquisitive. Why are you here? What's your message? And, um, then you're going to be more in control, okay? We have the King of Pentacles in reverse. And the important thing here is not to kind of like fall asleep on the job here. This is a very casual um, King of Pentacles. He's almost too relaxed. And I, <laughs> I think that it's good to enjoy the hard work that you've done and uh, like the sort of, what am I trying to say? The fruits of your labor, that's a good thing. But he's way too chill. Um, and the reversal of this card can sometimes indicate um, there could be a person in your life that's just not doing enough to give back. They could also be just really comfortable with receiving all of this. Um, maybe you know someone who, yeah, is just not working hard to get to the next level, whatever that is. Uh, this is a time to try to find a way to motivate them, or if they're not going to find that motivation, to not invest too heavily in that person until they have their wake up call. But for you, this is saying you've got a lot of really positive things that have come to you. Keep working hard. Don't give up because that's what got you where you're at. Um, and so this is a time to stay activated and not to kind of fall asleep on the job. Okay. Um, if you're not working, the King of Pentacles can also be this anxious card. Like I miss being there. I feel like I'm lazy. I feel like I'm not able to do this. Don't feel that either. There, there, this could just be a required uh, moment for you to be healthy, to um, get back to where you were supposed to do. Uh, like supposed to be uh, to, back in the beginning. And, and like I said, sometimes we we diverge from our soul path. So if you're having difficulty getting back into the same sort of job, look at other types of work or maybe think, is it time to invest in me? Whenever I see any of the court cards within the suit of pentacles reversed, it's a good time to go back to school. It's a good time for knowledge expansion. It's just a good time to think about doing something that is fulfilling. So that's the highest possible energy of the King of Pentacles in reverse is how can I put something back um, into my energy so that I'm feeling good and then I'm starting that wheel of fortune in the positive direction again, okay? Nine of Cups reversed. Many of you are in this period where things are in a very high or a very low energetic space. And um, the reversal of this can sometimes feel like, you know, the sky is falling or that things are really, really emotionally intense one day. But you know what I'm trying to kind of help you pull it is in, in a sort of more of a, an even kilter. And I think that um, if you can stay positive, then you'll also avoid some of the exacerbation of panic or energy that others might feel around you. So people feed off of the way that you act and react. So try to be as calm as possible. And if you're feeling triggered, take a, take a deep breath, take a walk drink some water. Actually, I know that's a <laughs> sounds easy, but it actually does help because it it um, it moderates your energy. It moves energy through you and it hydrates you. Um, so get around water, drink water, take a shower, take a bath, do something like that to kind of like uh, clear your head, clear your energy. And, you know, there's a reason that that's used for baptism. It actually goes through and kind of clears out the energetic fields of your body. So um, use water to your benefit this month. But with the nine of cups, reversed, you could be feeling also with the moon card, 
and Page of Swords, you wanna make sure that your emotions are not activating your throat chakra and you're not using, that's not the time that you wanna kind of be like the alligator. I think that's the connection there to be careful of. So if you need to talk to somebody, a friend, a counselor, or if you need some sort of a creative outlet to get rid of some of the emotional energy that's sort of heavily sitting on your shoulders this month, please do it, you deserve it. And it doesn't seem to me like it's going to be something that's persistent, but it is something that needs to be looked at. All right, hopes and fears, we have the devil card. Um, so the devil card to me has a lot of different connotations. The first thing that I wanna look at here is that some of you might just be afraid of letting go of something. Whenever I see a devil card, it usually to me can indicate being chained or attached to something that isn't healthy for you, okay? So we were seeing that attachment to the past or to, to trying to slow down or control time. That could be something for some of you. Um, it could also be the emotional ups and downs that are coming through with the Nine of Cups. So getting a handle on your emotions. Um, maybe some of you have buried the emotions for a long time and now they're coming up and you can't control that. So whatever the emotional or the sort of connection to the time is in your life right now, this is an important thing to kind of sort out. When new relationships are coming through, I can't ignore the correlation between the moon and the devil card, which is often about honesty. So there could be someone in your life who's just had a tricky relationship with the truth. And you're, you're at this point where you're thinking, I can't, I don't know how much more of that I can do. Maybe it's time to kind of move on beyond that relationship if that's if that's how you feel or you have to have a heart to heart with them. It's also just you looking at your life and thinking, where can I be more accountable? Am I keeping my own promises to myself and to others? Um, we can always do that internal audit. And um, we have a little child here, which is kind of like innocence or innocence lost. And for some of us, there was opportunities that were, um, they were taken away because maybe there was a parent or a teacher or someone in our life that we trust trusted and they just didn't come through the, the, way, the way that they wanted, that we needed them at that time. This is about going and healing that inner child. Forget about this. You're still innocent in your heart and your soul. Um, this energy was something that was in our life to teach us something, but I honestly believe we can always pull the power back. And to me, this is just, I like that this deck just has shadows because this is a projection of what we want it to be or what we think it might be. So if you think it's small, then it will be small. If you start to take your energy back, you'll take it back. Um, I don't watch many horror movies because I don't like low frequency energy. Um, as a kid, I read a couple Stephen King novels, but I watched the movie adaptation of It. Again, I don't watch horror very often, but I liked the very last scene. Um, uh, so spoiler alert, I'm just gonna give a little bit of information, but I won't give it all away. But the way that they conquer the negative energy in the book is through collectively taking the power back and saying like, you're nothing. This isn't something like you don't have any power. And I think that's really effective at things that we're afraid of in our lives. So if there's something in our life, a person, a place or a thing, you, you make a choice in your heart and your soul. I'm no longer going to be afraid of you. You don't have dominion or you know, I'm not beholden to your energy. So that's a powerful piece. I don't like anything else about the movie, but I like that because I think that there's something really powerful about fear manifesting. And that was something that made that, that monster scary because it played off of our fears. That's what this is. Something in your past or in your present or in your future could come in and could seem bigger than life. You just have to kind of make it smaller than life. And some of that comes through education. Some of that comes through exploring the shadow energy and just thinking again, why is it coming through? Who does it represent in my life? Could it be a parental figure, which is what that card looks like a lot, et cetera. So you can take the power back. Don't be afraid of this. It's just a shadow. Everything that I'm looking at here, it's light and shadows. That's why this is a really fascinating deck. Um, we don't focus on the face. We don't focus on what culture it is, whatever. It's more about the energy in the cards, which is why I was drawn to this particular deck. All right, so we have the Wheel of Fortune finally in the outcome. And the card is reversed, just like the clock was reversed. And I feel like for many of you, you're overdue for a change. Be patient, it's coming. And you can't really turn back the time. We do it, and I know it's that's probably what it's, what's also indicating, I think, for those of us that are on um, daylight saving time or whatever, I guess that's switching back. It probably switches in November, which is why I was seeing the clocks change. 
but it's also kind of like indicative of a bigger sort of thing. I don't know if it's November, December, so don't quote me. But what I'm really looking at there is like nostalgia, connection to the past, and um, and this feeling of like not being able to step into something uh, new. So anyway, I feel like we're we're looking at some really positive messages here. Um, I want to just highlight again, death, the fool, and the wheel of fortune. You couldn't get a more positive connection than that. That is change, opportunity, and um, a new cycle that takes that opportunity and manifests it. All the other stuff, it's noise, and it's stuff to focus on. So the moon card, the fox card, there's some stuff going on around you that you need to be aware of. The devil card, what do you want to let go of? And honestly, looking at accountability and honesty in your life, if there's people around you that aren't capable of doing that or being um, someone that you can lean on and trust, then it's a good time to step away from that and just think, I don't need this anymore. So everything that I've seen so far is really bringing you into a place of empowerment. And that's your theme today is you already have the power. You already have the insight. This is your time for reclamation. Okay. Let me take a quick drink here. And then we're going to focus on the expanded forecast. Everything within the expanded forecast is kind of multifaceted. So as I've started looking at health more and more, I'll look at two things. I'll look at the energy of health with this card, and then I'll pull out a few messages specific to tarot um, that will be more like with the body. But with spirit, what if things could be easy? Um, in the flow, which was what we saw with the chariot card, reverse, which is kind of like, let's, let's go my own way. I'm gonna figure out my own um, intuitive flow, and that's what we see. Two very different chariots here. We have what looks like <laughs> Santa's sleigh here um, and a skateboarder. But what I'm seeing here is um, you have the ability now for blessings and gifts in abundance. That's why I think we have, you know, Father Christmas sort of energy here. And also you have the ability to control and create that abundance. So imagine that everything is coming through exactly the way it should and that you're going to be fine throughout that process. You're in the flow. So... Um, if there's any changes in your life where you feel like you're not, just kind of think, where is the resistance? What, what led me to this point? Let's look at some specific health messages because I know you like that as well. You're overdue to change something. This is stagnation when it's reversed. So for some of you, you need to move a little bit more. You might need to move physically because it's just time. There's, there is a stagnant energy in your life that requires movement. You could just go in your house and move things around a little bit. Um, you know, change the location of certain things, clean, um, move the couch, vacuum underneath it, all that kind of stuff is going to be important. Move, move the energy, move the, move the objects, and then maybe physically or, or literally move yourself into something new. Some of you are dealing with like a close call. Maybe you had a health wake up call. Um, so whatever that could be for you, maybe there was a, you know, minor heart attack, or maybe Something happened and it wasn't serious, but it, it, it scared you to the point or you lost someone in your life and you think, I don't want that to happen. OK, this is just the angel coming through and saying, good, take care of yourself. That's it. Um, watch where you're walking, please, um, because we have this card and this card reversed. A couple months ago, I had a sprained ankle. It happens to everybody. Sometimes it was just uneven pavement. But when I'm looking at a, a control card and it's not controlled, when I look at the fool card, which can indicate um, a stumble and then the Wheel of Fortune also kind of upside down. These are all moving in a weird direction. Um, so stay on path this month too. make a commitment to yourself for whatever it's going to be, mental or physical or financial health, something, and just stick with it and stay focused on that one thing. Don't get distracted and don't overcommit. I think those are important things as well. And the devil is just like, let's get rid of something in our life that we don't need. So maybe it's smoking, maybe it's drinking, maybe it is taking care of something like the emotional side here that's been swept under the rug. This is just coming in to help you and saying, look, why aren't you dealing with it? I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere until you tell me to get lost because the devil is very persistent, okay? Anyway, so I feel like you know what you got to work on, but the good news is if you do it, we've got the Wheel of Fortune as the outcome, so you'll see progress. Looking at wealth, we have um, dedicated effort. We see someone building a fresco here um, or painting a fresco on the ceiling. Uh, and it reminds me of kind of like a combination of the eight of pentacles or three of pentacles. This is someone that's really working their passion 
and it will be appreciated, but they, they kind of have to have that vision. And there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears and toiling that goes into that. Any of us that are artists, I'm one of them. Like if you, whatever your art is, whether it's writing or mu music or something else, even if you're building a house or building a certain part of your life that you want to share with somebody, you have to take a lot of time and effort. And there's always something that you could fix. But what I'm seeing here is just do your best and then release it. And this is in wealth. So some of you are sitting on something that you can capitalize or, or kind of work with. And that's really exciting. So I hope you're ready for it. Um, when you are, it looks like you've earned everything that comes your way. And if you're looking to go back to school or learn something, that was what we were talking about earlier with the King of Pentacles in reverse. Um, personal development and expansion is going to be super helpful. Okay. Um, overall, let's see, you do have a pentacles card and you have a wheel of fortune card, which I think are good. Um, if I were just to pull the camera down for a second there, um, this is you. So this shows me the potential, this shows me the outcome. And we look at what's kind of fogging it up here a little bit. It's really emotions, um, fear, frustration, or other emotions kind of getting in the way. And in this particular scenario, the, how you feel is the devil, not like necessarily, uh, some sort of third party or object or anything. It's sort of like your own feelings. So don't let your feelings get in the way of the productive energy that we're seeing right around it, okay? Love. We have um, Angel of Jupiter awakening here. Jupiter is such a powerful planet to connect to. Um, I actually love Jupiter when I see it coming through in my meditation. Sometimes like, okay, so last night I was having alligators and clocks and other things visit me. Whenever I've had Jupiter visit me, it's been positive. And I've gone into the planet before, and it looks a lot like, like not like what you would see on the exterior, but I see the growing energy, like the green. And I saw the same thing. So the last time I saw Jupiter in my life, there was like a big period of growth and development. It was like right after I left my corporate job. I had a dream and I was moving through that planet, like through the energy of it. And it was really cool. I'm like, this isn't what the planet looks like, but this is what its energy looks like. And so to have that in your um, love er area tells me that many of you are being challenged to um, kind of move through some heavy emotions because Jupiter is massive. And if you were in the planet as a human, we would, you wouldn't last like a, a microsecond because it, you'd just be crushed with the energy. So one thing that I think is important, if you have heavy things that you're dealing with, please get help. Um, if you're dealing with difficult people in your life, as I said, teams are going to be more effective than just you doing it. So you are not an island. You, in this particular situation, I feel like team energy is going to be a lot more effective. But on the flip side, wow, there's room for growth. And if you're willing to kind of like let go and maybe fall in love or try something new or follow your heart, really great things could come through. And that's what this is showing. But there's a reversal on this, which is making it a little bit heavier. So you have to lighten that energy to go into the expansive energy that Jupiter is offering you. But overall, it's a very positive note. Um, one thing that some of you are going to have to wor work through this month is something that gets revealed. And I saw that in the channeled messages, the breadcrumbs. So there could be someone in your life that's just not being cautious and you catch them in a half truth or a lie. Um, you might be caught, you know, has something that you said that you were going to do that you didn't do that, you know, whatever it's, it's going to come through and it's ultimately a blessing because now, you know, something that you needed to know, and it's really a question of how you're going to deal with it. And that's a choice that you and you alone can make, but it's a growth opportunity, whatever that is, whether it's going into your own life and saying, I have to deal with this sort of shadow energy, or if there's someone in your life that reveals something, it won't exist anymore. You get to shine your spotlight into this and then it's just you and the sun afterwards, right? Okay, that's all it's about. But there is something that you have to deal with. And for some of you, a reminder not to get territorial, not to get defensive. It might just be time to move on from a job or from a relationship. The devil can be a Capricorn. Um, so, um, and the moon can be a Scorpio. Um, it can be another water sign too, but you could be dealing with a couple of people in your life. You might have a choice between them. Um, but with the death card here, there's also, and the fool card, maybe one or both of these people are kind of orbiting in your life and they're going to orbit out as well. Cause it's um, you, you're finishing up retrograde at the very beginning of November. And uh, what you're kind of getting an opportunity to do is to sort of like 
bless and release certain energies. So imagine that they are these highly elliptical orbits that are coming around you one more time and you, won't, you may not have to see them again in this lifetime. So this is your last chance to sort of clean it up and then say, so long. <laughs> now I can focus on other things and they'll orbit out, okay? Finally, we have um, in your destiny card, a harmonizing energy here with the music card. And it's interesting because we had kind of have these two hearts, but we're looking at the solar plexus energy really with a little bit of the sexual chakras here, maybe a little bit of root energy. So we're looking at the lower three chakras as being really important to finding power, stability and harmony. And usually we would think of like the upper chakras and um, as spiritual light workers on the planet, it's, it's ever so important to make sure that the lower um, chakras are, are being taken care of. Do you feel safe? Are you able to express yourself creatively, sexually? Um, are you feeling strong enough and powerful enough to um, do what you wanna do in your life? All of those elements are coming through in this card and hopefully you can find a way to get there. That'll move us along to the greener energy that we saw with the Jupiter card here. So um, yeah, some exciting stuff and some places to focus and move your energy around this month. And I think that's a big part of that is moving and shifting to get into a healthier space. Let's do a quick review. So if any of you just joined, this is the perfect time, or if you forgot anything I said, we're gonna um, summarize it really quickly and then we'll go a little bit deeper. And because we got some heavy major arcana energy here, I'll go a little deeper into like death or the devil or, or the moon and see what they have to offer us and see what messages um, might be a part of that, okay? So let me turn the camera down and we'll talk about everything. All right, so the first piece Again, I've never dreamed of this before. This is the first time I've seen an alligator come through in, um, in meditation or in dreams. But it was, it was through like three or four different threads last night in my dreams. So overall, I think it's a very strong, powerful animal. And I, I'm happy that it came and visited me. It reminded me that um, you have the capacity to use your words in a way that really can make an impact. In fact, it has a punch or it has bite to it. Like a, it, we had a page of swords reversed, but it's, I knew I was figuring we would have at least one of those cards pop up, page, king, queen, knight. So just be careful because there's, it cuts both ways. Um, you can make a big impact, but if you say something, it's out there forever. Words once said are said forever. So you wanna be cognitive of that. Um, try not to corner others and likewise, don't let yourself get painted into a corner either. And I think the best thing this month to, to try to do is to work with a team and remember to stay above. I saw myself levitating or floating above the alligator at one point. It was snapping at me, but it couldn't do anything. So staying above the energy of um, like arguing or saying negative speech. We don't have a lot of good examples nowadays because there's a lot of adults out there that are misbehaving and saying nasty things. And we have to kind of show by example, like that's not the way to do it. It doesn't really solve anything. It makes for great theater, but it's not really you know, an effective way of communicating. Um, then I saw the breadcrumbs, much like you would see in Hansel and Gretel. Uh, have a backup plan is basically what I saw with this, but uh, make sure that unlike Hansel and Gretel, um, that it's tested a little bit and that you, you know, you have maybe one or two backup plans or a safety net so that you don't have the fear of getting lost. Um, realize also there's a lot of like searching and finding and following energy that comes with that. And that's why we have like the moon and the devil. So um, people wanna follow you this month. They want to learn more about you. They may even be researching you, especially if you're getting a job that has like a security clearance or something like that, or you've applied for something and they're gonna do a background check. So clean up your background right now. That's the important thing. Assume that everything is gonna be seen, lead a good life, lead by example. If you made a mistake, fix the mistake and then be ready to talk about it. Um, and that's all. Uh, once you kind of deal with that, there's nothing to be afraid of. This energy that we see in the devil card goes away. Some doors are shut and locked for a reason. Um, some relationships, some experiences are better left in the past. You need to find, find your peace with it. But at a certain point, what's done is done. And it might be more effective or more powerful to focus on the doors that are still open or that are opening because the other ones are kind of like that clock that you're holding on to not really leading you anywhere. It's just the same old, same old. I saw writing on the wall, um, which to me is an obvious choice, but maybe one that you haven't been able to get into yet. There seemed to be a fork in the road, but resistance, um, like the two of swords as you were sitting in front of that opportunity. And um, like the judgment card, sometimes it's just 
a matter of accepting something that you need or want to do, but haven't given yourself a chance to do it. So um, if you're afraid, don't be afraid. Take that, um, take that energy back. A move or moving on, which can also be a part of the Wheel of Fortune, seems like it's also coming into play. I saw you holding on to a clock. <laughs> I saw it being upside down like an hourglass. It didn't make sense, but it also made a lot of symbolic sense. Um, it's time to move on or reset your expectations. Also, there's a new cycle coming. Are you ready for it? Um, a gift of extra or borrowed time could also be in front of you. Just realize that it's limited. So there's no time to kind of like waste. Again, if you're afraid of moving on or moving forward, do some research. Um, daydream a little bit. It's important to do that. Focus on overall time management and making the best use of the time that you do have rather than being afraid of like how much time you have or if it's going to run out because those are kind of like intangible things that we can't control. You're able to instinctively work through anything that comes through. We've got this sly fox here and um, trust your instincts during the changing times. We had death at the center, so that makes a lot of sense. Take care of your health and really focus on um, what's making you feel good. I mean, it sounds easy and simple, but that's a good litmus test as you're looking at things to pursue in your life. Does it feel right? Does it feel good? If yes, then go for it. If not, then don't. Also, just focus on general health and well-being this month. You might feel like there's a lack of action or stagnation. If there is, it's time to, to make a change. Um, if change is happening and you're a little bit afraid of it, don't be. We have the Queen of Wands here, which is really just about managing and realizing like the cat here in this illustration, you have nine lives, like just who knows where you're at on that path, but this is indicating that there's at least one more, so make the best of it, okay? Chariot in reverse, Wheel of Fortune in reverse, um, really encouraging you to kind of go more into the flow, which we saw here. Assume that everything is leading you in the right direction. So just like the skateboarder, you know, you can, you can dodge, you can weave in, you can weave out. You, you don't need other people kind of pulling you in another direction. With the Fool card here, what we're seeing is it's time to take a, take a leap of faith, take a calculated risk. I feel like you can do it. Page of Swords in reverse, really watching the way that you communicate um, and how well you're listening. But remembering like the alligator, you have a chance to really make an impact. You just have to make sure that you hear what people are saying and that they hear what you're saying. So there's a little bit of extra work that's required to just validate assumptions. Listen, you've got to talk about some stuff that might be making you feel un uncertain or unsure. The moon, the devil, the nine of cups, the moon and the, the nine of cups are reverse. So there's some fear around that. For some of you, the fear could be around money. Uh, maybe you don't have control over it. Maybe you're afraid of it. Maybe you feel overwhelmed about it. Take back the power, talk to somebody. Uh, and for all of you, maybe it's just even afraid to kind of like invest in yourself or try something new. Whatever this is, it's just fear. Um, the moon card shows me good instincts, good intuition. The king of pentacles, anything you set your mind to, you can do, but you have to be more active than this card is illustrated um, to be. Um, nine of cups, probably some of the reason that you might be feeling that weirdness is just emotional stuff. And I really feel like it's important to take care of your emotional well-being this month. Mental health cannot be um, underestimated how important that is. Emotional health is definitely a part of that. There's just an opportunity in front of you that isn't everything that it seems to be. There might be a relationship that is just kind of coming to a close with death, the moon, and the, the devil card. You might have a couple of partner choices that just aren't suitable. Whatever it is, it's time to move on. And if you're in a relationship, I, I usually uh, I want to hit this. So if you're in a relationship, honesty, accountability, and realizing that neither of you are perfect, that's coming through. If you're looking for love, just take your time. Um, I feel like your focus actually should be on other things. We have the Wheel of Fortune and the uh, King of Pentacles here. So it feels like this could be a distraction. So if you're looking for love, maybe just take it easy during November. Um, if you're meeting new people, also take it easy. Really get to know them. Ask the tough questions. Make sure that there are equal, there's equal investment between the two of you. And if you're single and happy, good for you. And what I think is going to still be important, though, is relationship, like navigating these relationships um, there's people coming in, people going out. <laughs> and right now I feel like as I'm looking at the key energies this month, it's just so important for you um, not to get lost in the shuffle. So I think this is a time where you're going to be acting a little bit more 
uh, as your own agent and focusing on yourself and making sure that people around you do the necessary work on their own as well. Hold them accountable. For health, assume things are working in your favor. Also assume that you can move forward. You can move past this. You're in a cycle change right now. So do what you can to feel comfortable with that. Going back to school is great. Working on yourself is great. Maybe there's something that you're ready to release. Awesome. Don't be a perfectionist. There's always going to be something that you see that others won't. Expansion awaits you, but there's a heaviness that needs to be released first when it comes to love. And then overall, this is going to bring you into a place of harmony. And it's going to help out all relationships in the future. And this also kind of reminds me of the hourglass too. So everything's kind of interconnected here. So cool stuff. Um, let's take a look now at your, um, your soul path. And I'm going to look at death first. I want to see what the change or transformation element is and what additional insights we could get on that. There's probably going to be an element of the past to this because that's kind of how this works as past, present, future. So for me, the past is about the transition and how or why. Uh, maybe you're ready or you're not ready to get into that. And the card just volunteered itself. Um, okay, so we have the eight of wands that just flew out of the deck. Um, and we see the person here kind of dodging all of the different um, batons or bullets or whatever this is in the air. Um, so it's interesting. There's another um, deck, and I think it's, let's see, Wildwood? Yeah, I think Wildwood has another one where it's the seven or the eight of wands. There's like a goat in the air that's trying to avoid all the same sort of things. Your reflexes are being tested this month, your ability to kind of act quickly. And with the eight of wands, like to keep up. So one of the things that's challenging for you this month is that change is happening, but you're also super busy and taking the necessary time to let the change happen. Um, it's going to be a juggling act for you. And I, I just came through a month where the same thing was happening. I'm working on a big project and then I have videos and then I have uh, one-on-ones with people and it's just a lot sometimes, right? So we've all had moments where we feel like the eight of wands and we're kind of like dodging and trying to be okay. So take a few moments to get your feet on the ground, ground yourself in your purpose and make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to change because I hate to say it, but the eight of wands can sometimes be an evasive card where you use work or you use responsibilities or things in your life uh, to kind of like push back the necessary. So if you are working all the time and there's something in your life that you're not happy with, you need to pause for a moment and fix that. This is basically saying you're never too busy to make the change that you need to. So that's what it is basically. Slow down, ground yourself, focus on what needs to look, be done. Um, and again, the change for everybody's gonna be different or it could be like just even grieving something. You need some time, you, you can't work as hard as you're working. I think is basically what we're seeing here. Um, so just take a day or two to kind of pull your energy into a good space and I think you're gonna be okay. On the, on the bright side though, this is an abundance card. So we connect that with your Wheel of Fortune card and the Fool card, good stuff on the horizon for you. Um, just don't get so wrapped up in that change that um, you lose track of something, okay? Um, let me look here real quick. I want, I'm gonna combine the energies of the moon and the devil because they're very similar. Um, it's really about seeing things that we don't wanna see. So what do you need to see is my question as I'm looking at this. Love it, love it. This is my, I always say it, it is my favorite card. So hidden under all of this is who you are. So if there's someone in your life that's not letting you step into this energy, the devil could totally want you not to be the star uh, because this is basically the antithesis of shadow energy. So if you're ever at a very important nexus in your life, literally, like I talked in another sign about Janus, it stands at the doorway between ends and beginnings. It's got two faces, it's looking at the past, it's looking at the future. Um, death is your friend, it wants to pull you through the door. The devil doesn't, it wants to pull you back because it doesn't want you to shine. So listen to, to death, to Janus, to transformation. It is saying, come with me, friend. This isn't the end, this is the beginning. That's what the message is here. This isn't the end, this is the beginning. This is your ninth life, or this is your next life, or this is the next piece. 
So I believe that, that the moon and the devil are the fear of change. Maybe it's a father figure in your life that's saying, you can't do this. Maybe it's a mother or a sister or a sibling figure in your life that's doing the same. Maybe it's your partner that doesn't have the same faith in you that you have. Maybe it's you kind of defeating yourself. Whatever it is, let go of it because the star is on the horizon. Um, yeah. Listen to the little voice, the good voice in your head. <laughs> the bird here is kind of chirping and saying, hey, this is the path. Follow me. That's the voice to listen to. That's the thing to follow. All right. So hidden under the moon and the devil is the star. What are you, are you afraid of success? Are you afraid of becoming you? Are you afraid of what it might be like if you're not doing something? Sometimes fear of success can hold us back, right? All right, let's look at the Wheel of Fortune. Why is it reversed? Three of Pentacles, perfectionist. It's reversed here too. So notice how it's never done, right? It's never done. And I'm, I'm also in the same court with you on this. There comes a point where it has to be enough. So you could go to school and have 17 degrees and never feel like you're done. It's usually not 17 degrees. Usually sometimes people have three or five degrees. But at a certain point, it's sort of like, why are you still going to school? You have everything that you need. Or if you're going to teach, that's cool. Or if you just want to constantly be in a knowledge expanding career, that's awesome too. Be a scientist, be an engineer, be something like that. But what this is also saying, though, is there, there comes a point when you've done everything that you need. And the important thing is usually you're doing it for you. The three of pentacles, although we have people around us, um, the power in the three of pentacles is the internal integration that you've received as a sort of end result of the experience. So if you've gone to college, if you've worked on something for 20 years, if you've been work fixing up a house that you're going to sell, the, the act of doing is what the gift was. And that was where you received your upgrade. And what these people think, what they're writing in their charts, the you know, the one thing I really don't miss about corporate America is the insane reviews. You would have to put stuff in a performance connection thing and people would write things and say things in it. And even like when I was in school and you had the check marks, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. I think it's important to take stock, but those are arbitrary opinions based on what someone else thinks that I'm doing. It's not an actual measurement of where I'm at in my path and you have no idea of who I am or what my capacity is. This is how I'm measuring against what you want me to do. So I want you to go internal and think, am I happy with what I've done? And is it like, have I achieved what I needed to do? Whatever it is that you're doing. If you have, you're done. It's good. Move on. Open the door. There's a new door waiting. Put that last stroke of paint on and <laughs> let it all dry. Move forward. Okay. I think that's a big message here. Okay. Good. Um, beautiful message here uh, overall here because we have basically take time to enjoy the here and the now. Don't be so busy that you miss the big picture. Many of you are just maybe afraid of stepping into the new light or you have somebody here that's afraid to let you be the star. This could totally be the case in a corporate environment or in a marriage situation or friend, like if you have a friend of me that is um, a little bit triggered because you're moving further ahead than they are. And then are you holding yourself back? Um, these are the most powerful cards we pulled today because they're going to help you get away from holding yourself back. So don't be too busy. Don't be afraid of success. Let it go. There you go. <laughs> cool messages for you. Nice way to wrap it up. Um, this is why I have fun with tarot and I don't get afraid of seeing any cards. It's really just more like we need to keep digging deeper. I don't over clarify because I think that also gets confusing. There are 78 cards and you could just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and then it means nothing. But I think a few extra cards can actually give us a lot of additional insight and you definitely got that today. All right, let's get into the meditation. Um, we have the star, which I like, and I think that would be something cool, but we also have death. Um, I wanna kind of move between the transformational energy and because this is November and again, like I said, Day of the Dead, All Souls Day, All Saints Day, Halloween, having just ended, I'm going to work through the release. We're going to go through the portal together. Um, we're going to work with death, and then we're going to work with the star in this meditation, okay? I'm not afraid of those energies. Um, so please get comfortably seated. And before we get started, I'd love for you to hit like and subscribe. Um, it really makes a difference. I know you got to get sick of the YouTubers saying this, but blame Google. Um, if you don't hit like and subscribe, my video gets... It's not, it doesn't, 
go very high in the search right now. So like, uh, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, makes a big difference. It's one click on your part, but it helps me because I don't sit here and talk about like your soulmate the whole time. And I'm not, yeah, I'm talking about different stuff. So it needs to kind of bubble up in a different way. So if you like what you see, you can help me by doing that. Enough said. All right, get comfortably seated. And um, I'm gonna get the singing bowl ready. And we're gonna, we're gonna walk through the portal of change today. If you're listening on headphones, um, turn it down just a little bit when I do the singing bowl. Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy. Um, we're gonna meditate first anyway. If you've never done this before, you should stick around or check it out later. Make sure you bookmark this. Okay, close your eyes, please. Take a nice deep breath with me as well. Sort of tune into your body. Think of something you don't want or need in your life anymore. Let it go. Good. I like that we have like a friendly figure for death in this card. It's actually shown as a woman. I believe death can take any form, just like the devil. Um, so imagine that it is something friendly. Let's maybe take the scythe out of that and just imagine that um, there's a friendly figure in the doorway. It's warm, it's maternal like we saw there, and it's reaching a hand towards you. And as you kind of look at the energy of death in front of you, let's call it transformation so it doesn't sound scary. As we look at the energy of transformation, the being that's representing transformation, we see that it's constantly changing, it's constantly shifting. Imagine that as it opens its robe, that what we see inside is like a, um, a nebula, or it's like you're going into outer space. There's dimensional energy in there. What it's revealing to you is that this is, this is opportunity, this is change, this is an opening, it's a gateway. As it puts its robe back on, you realize it's just here to help you move through a gateway. And as it stands to the side, it's showing you the gateway. And it's reaching out a hand, a friendly hand that's going to guide you into the next dimension or the next role in your life. So think a little bit about what it is you wanna let go of because when you take a hold of death's hand or transformation's hand, it's gonna also take that which you no longer need. So if there's something, pain from the past, disappointment from the past, a relationship that you no longer need, this resplendent being is going to take the burden from you and then it's going to help pull you through the portal so that new opportunities await you. Take a moment to stand at the portal of transformation, this gateway. Notice that it's not scary, it's bright. Who would have thought that it would be bright? Who would have thought that the being would be kind, would be maternal, would be opening um, and welcoming? There's nothing scary about it. As you look at this gateway, in fact, it sort of seems like silvery and shiny and, and almost like it's got its own luminosity. And as you look behind you, this is where the realm of dream and shadows and past is. This is maybe the scarier part. As you look forward, it's nothing but bright and light and opportunity. So take a look at what it is that you were afraid of or what you no longer want in your life and bless it. See it starting to fade a little bit, almost like twilight. And instead you start to see stars coming through. You realize that this portal is not on earth. You're actually in space somewhere else. And as you stand now at this portal, you feel very comfortable, very at ease. And you're gonna take the hand of this being and allow it to bring you forth. Imagine that as you do this, you feel a lightness of being, that you feel like you're almost floating on a cloud. And as I play the singing bowl, allow this lightness of being to bring you forth to the next step, wherever it is that you're going. It's gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine.
Take a deep breath. Let it go. Imagine now that you've already moved through whatever that was. Making the decision is usually the scariest part. Deciding I'm ready. I'm ready for this change. I'm ready for this opportunity. I'm ready for this adventure. As you find yourself here in uh, a new sort of undiscovered country, I want you to look around and imagine that there are several paths in front of you, all leading to wonderful opportunities. See this as a new, fruitful, um, wonderful kind of wheel of fortune energy that's going to bring a new cycle in your life. And if you're looking for a sign, imagine that there's a butterfly that's going to lead you down the next path and that the angel has transformed itself into that. But behind you, the portal has closed. You're in the future, you're in the new you, and you've brought that into your mind and body today as well. So all you have to decide now is that I am ready. You have to say that to yourself and the door has been opened. The energy is already around you. So start looking for the signs, start breathing into the possibilities and uh, some good stuff is in store, all right? If you haven't already done so, um, you can open your eyes and take a deep breath together. If you haven't opened them, just inhale. On the exhale, relax your posture one more time and gently open your eyes. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully um, you enjoyed the meditation, super magical. Um, I actually enjoy working with the energy of transformation. I think it's a really kind sort of energy that gets misunderstood a lot, right? So um, thank you for letting me facilitate that meditation. Just a couple quick things before we wrap up. Um, first of all, if, if you enjoyed what you saw here again, consider hitting like and subscribe. It does help a lot and it doesn't require a lot of work. So I thank you. I'm going to be going through some ways that you can stay in touch with me. Everything's on my website, nicholasashblah.com. If you can't remember my um, website or how to find me, you can just click on my profile picture here on YouTube and then click on the about tab and all the information's contained there. Um, I'd love for you to follow me on social media. I'm on um, most major platforms with the username at Nicholas Ashbaugh, nothing before, nothing after. Um, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, I will use stories to remind you of upcoming videos. I can actually put links on Instagram and Facebook, so feel free to use that as a reminder. Um, Patreon and also becoming a YouTube member here is a great way to give back in a consistent way and it really does make a difference like the deck that you saw today was a result of that so thank you um, I'm also on TikTok and Twitter Twitter has a slightly different handle it's at at an ashbaugh so um, that's the only one that's different um, PayPal if you want to give back in a different way is pay, paypal.me slash Nicholas Ashbaugh again all of those are on my website so if I go fast don't worry about it um, my moderators are putting the links here the links will also be eventually in the video later today um, thank you. Anybody who did a super chat today, I'll pin um, a comment of gratitude later tonight. Again, I'll end of day today. If you happen to watch this on uh, replay, you can use the applaud feature, um, but it's only available right now on the desktop version of YouTube or Android. iOS is coming later. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I'm excited about the new changes because really the big energy this month is the Wheel of Fortune, but you have to pass through the portal like we just did of change. You have to move through some of the scary things that were triggered by the moon and the devil, but ultimately we see some really cool developmental and recognition cards coming through. You gotta be yourself though, and that's why the star came through and let go of something. And by doing that, I feel like you've got a really exciting month ahead and end of the year as well. So. Really pleased to be here for you. I hope you have a fantastic um, November, great day ahead, and thank you so much. Um, I'll be back tomorrow for Pisces, and then all of the November uh, readings will be posted. So thank you, everybody. Much love and light. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.